I just want to read for that. So I'm going to do a piece called, this is the only poem I think I ever memorized. I have a terrible memory. Um, in spite of it all. I even forgot how we do it. This poem I've done with a dancer. I had a wonderful opportunity to, to work with a dancer as her um, PhD pieces, and she created a South African dancer. And she did this wonderful dance, and then Manetta and I have done it several times, and we work with children with it, and this is called In Spite of It All. <clears throat> We learn to lick them clean. We learn to let them heal. For we are the women now. There is so much beauty in a sister who loves herself. We smile at ourselves every time we can stand up straight without tipping over. For we are balanced now. We can open our eyes wide and look at this here body with the expanded hips and the heavy thighs. And we are satisfied. All those interested in disturbing our peace of mind are denied entrance here. We do not wish to be put through changes, not hit, cursed, or manipulated. So you got to love us or leave us alone. Love us or leave us alone. In spite of all the nonsense, we learn to love ourselves. In spite of folks telling us we ain't nothing, we think we all that. We ain't light enough, ain't dark enough, too black, too proud. We learn to love ourselves. In spite of those long nights and hard days, all the history that never become her stories. We learn to face those wounds of the past. We now meet these new wounds and we learn to lick them clean. For we are balanced now. We learn to embrace all that is beautiful, good, and pure. This poem is for all of us who can smile on ourselves every time we can stand up straight without tipping over. For we are balanced now. We are balanced now. And this is a new piece. I've never read this before, so I figure you're eating, so <laughs> you're happy, it'll be okay. Um, the, the collection is a mixture of stories, and it's called Flutter because one of the things that I guess people who know me well enough know, every time I have something going on, nervousness, it always happens in my stomach. I always get really nervous. And um, I, I uh, broke up the manuscript into three pieces about immigration, about mental illness, and about things like love, and those are all flutter moments, okay? So before I share this piece, I'm just going to share a short piece called Flutter, and it's about that. Then we're going to do the rock to you. Everything used to take me in the belly, from the rumblings to the volcano, it all happened there. I am the daughter of a woman whose schizophrenic voices quaked and quivered me. I am a transplant in a place where I constantly had to constrict and recoil. I am a girl whose trials with love contorted and tumbled me. All of these I've come to own. But these days, I am wanting a settling. If this belly must speak, I will answer only to a whisper, a butterfly, a flutter. I like to mix things up. I talk a lot, so I don't get to this all day, so here you go. <laughs> um, even though some of the poems have a sad edge to them, um, I also, there's beauty in all the moments. And this is called Rock Your, Rock Your Baby. George McCray, there's a song that he had. Um, you know that song. I can't sing. Oh, let me take me on Rock Your Baby. Okay, you got it, right? Don't sing it. Okay. No, I'm not going to sing it. But um, anyway, this comes out of an experience in childhood. It's called Rock Your Baby. It's a very new piece. So here it goes. 1970s, 14 weeks on the Billboard chart. George McCrae's smooth 
soul lets you know that he's got a serious Jones. Woman, take me in your arms and rock your baby. George commands her to hold him with all her might. Let that loving flow sweet and flow. I'm nine and I don't hear no I don't yet know what makes a man tick, but I know that in apartment C7 we're having a real good night. The last Liberian has left, the Bud and Miller cans collected, jell of rice Tupperware, and the kitchen wiped to a shine. Daddy pulls out the sleeper sofa and Reddy's Junior's cot. The console hums sweetly, eight track clicking, reverberating George's silken tongue. Mama abandons the afro piece in her hair, washes away the glimmer of Saturday house party, and rinses her mouth free of Salem's life. The polyester dress clings to her hourglass. Sweat and Chloe traps the air between us. She plasters us with tipsy kisses as she moves to hush the stereo. Please let it finish, I beg. Daddy moves in and spins her, and something grown up fills the living room. I'm nine, and I don't yet know what makes a man tick. But I can say that I was a million tingles that night to witness how a man and woman's love can salvage a family. This was before we lost her, when our daddy rocked his baby into the dawn, and we knew that what George really meant. There's nothing to it. Open up your heart and let the loving start.